day 66, Friday, May 22nd. Hey everyone, did you start the other camera? Jai Joy here, Jai Joy Show. So it's been a long time since I've been on here. I don't even remember what day it was, the day I was the last on here. But today is day 66, which is crazy because it's just never ending here. I don't know when it's ever going to end in Las Vegas. We have no date for the casinos yet from Governor's Select. Like the casinos want to open June 1st. Well, um, uh, uh, Treasure Island wanted to open today, but Governor Sislake has not given a date. And then all of them are wanting to open uh, June 1st. Governor Sislake still hasn't given a date. He says he doesn't even want to let the casinos open until phase three or four, and we're only in phase one. And we're in day 66. You guys, this is insane. He's just not letting the casinos open for no reason. They opened them in Arizona. They open casinos in Arizona. Um, and you can say, oh, there was this deadly virus. It was never a deadly virus, you guys. It was a regular flu virus. Yeah, We're seeing the numbers the come out now. And also, the governor's just, like, allowed construction the entire time. So it definitely wasn't a deadly virus. Because they even had, um, I think it was 16 workers that we know have tested positive at the Raiders Stadium. And they allowed that to continue. They're almost done with the Raiders Stadium. They allowed them to just barrel forward with construction during the whole time. He just doesn't want the casinos open. And, um... We got a little oh, we got some bad sounds. Oh. Okay. Try now. All right, but is that going to work through the thing? Okay. Oh, all right, cool. Just speak loud. Okay, but uh, will it work for your recording? Yeah, okay. Anyway, so, um, sorry, I was making sure it was set up right. But it's, the thing is, Governor like just does not want the casinos open for, I think, several reasons. One is because he's a devout Catholic, and he asked the advice from 12 bishops what he should do about Sin City. What do you think they would say? Do you think they ever want it to open again? So you get your answer there. And then the other thing is, we all know this is political. And so they're trying to sabotage the economy. And also, a lot of Trump supporters are here in Nevada, like the big people like Sheldon Adelson and Steve Wynn had been one. He's not here anymore. But um, So he's trying to hurt the people that are directly connected with Trump. And he's trying to destroy the economy, along with the other Democratic governors. A couple of the other ones are doing the same thing. A couple of other states, California and New York, they're letting up some of the restrictions in some places, but some states are still being strict and is looking ridiculous. And I think they should impeach Governor Sislek. I think 100%. I was looking into what governors have been impeached, and there have been four, and three of them were Democratic, and one was Republican. Um, now, like I've told you guys before all this, you know, I've never voted. I am not political. This is the first I've even really spoke about political stuff really in my life. And this is all because Governor Sislek shut down Nevada, which um, and primarily Las Vegas, which is my livelihood. So now I've been like talking about politics for the last 66 days, but I don't vote and I refuse to vote because the system is so flawed that I will not partake in that system. And I don't like any of the candidates they give us. But. 100%, I believe this is a Demo the Democrats trying to take down Trump because their candidates are not good uh, candidates against Trump. I mean, well, who do they got? Biden? He's an oddball. Oh. <laughs> Obama was awesome. Biden is a nut case. I don't know where they found that dude. Um, and then who else is? I don't even know who's running. I don't even pay attention to that stuff. But um, I know Bernie Sanders was. He's out of it. Um, and then... Um, so they're worried about Trump becoming president again and any Republican becoming president, too, but especially Trump. And the reason why it's so important this term is because they think um, one of the Supreme Court judges is going to die during the next president's term. And probably um, that judge Ginsburg, she's she's very ill. She's been in and out of cancer remission. And, you know, there's been several times they thought she was going to die. And so there's a good chance um, she won't make it, you know, f another four years. So they're worried um, if a Republican is in office, 
We'll see already the Republicans have the majority of Congress. So here's the deal. If you guys don't understand um, the U.S. system, if you're watching from overseas or something, um, our system, you know, you have the president and you have Congress and you have the Supreme Court. And so the president, for most things, he has to get approval from Supreme Court and Congress for things. He can't most things. He can't just say I'm president and just do whatever he wants. Some things we're finding Trump has quite a bit of power, more than we knew some presidents have. Like, oh, I guess the president can do that. But there's supposed to be a little bit of a checks and balance of, you know, a lot of things you need, Supreme Court and Congress. Well, right now, the Republicans have the majority of Congress. Um, so when a Republican president wants something approved, if the majority of Congress is Republican, there's a good chance they'll get it approved. And now the issue, if a Supreme Court judge dies, then they're going to have the majority of the Supreme Court. So then the checks and balance is all Republican. There isn't really a checks and balance. So it's like Republicans could get anything passed and Democrats could get nothing passed. Um, so that they're worried about that it would become completely dominated by the Republicans. And so they're willing to do anything. They already tried to impeach the president and they couldn't get him removed. They tried, you know, the Russian collusion thing. They, they've they gone through all kinds of things while um, Trump was president to try to, you know, bring him down and make people not like him. And, you know, I don't particularly like the guy, but um, I like him better than the Democrats right now. For what I've seen, they've what they've done has been way worse, so much more detrimental to anyone than anything Trump did. And he did a lot of crap, too. I mean, I don't like he did that. He started the whole thing by doing that um, tax on China. That's how I think this whole thing started. He he did a 25% tax on Chinese products. So what that meant to us um, in America is that everything became more expensive when you ordered online um, from eBay or Amazon. And you think, oh, who cares? Because we'll get it American-made. That's what they're saying. But the problem is most American-made products are actually bought with things from China. They just assemble them in the U.S. and they say it's American-made. But most of, like, a lot of the little small things that they need to put it together, they buy from China. That's just the way the world is because even if you come down to maybe even just their tools they bought from China, you know, whatever it is, like— they ha they will go to China because the things were cheaper, and that's how, always how it was. Well, Trump then did this tax, which made everything more expensive, and people then didn't buy as much stuff from China because it all of a sudden became way more expensive. I don't know if you noticed online, especially certain things like a lot of things having to do with phones and stuff, like, like cell phone cases and weird little things and computers and laptops and things. They, you notice like this increase in the prices. You're like, whoa. And so that pissed off China. So, like, I think this whole virus thing started where, okay, you guys, every year we have a regular flu virus. We have a regular flu virus comes in, wipes out about 50,000 people in the U.S. and around 650,000 worldwide. Happens every year. And all we did this year is we documented it. But what happened is China first started the whole punk where they said, oh, this deadly virus in Wuhan and everyone, you saw them in all this, chemed out gear and they're all, you know, the gas masks. And um, we're like, oh, my gosh. And that's all they had to do was just convince Americans that there was a deadly virus where every year there's a flu virus. And so we're finding that they, they fudged the numbers, that they blew it way out of proportion, scared us. So then... Over here, even Trump in the beginning was saying that it was uh, uh, fake news from China, that it was, you know, there was a virus, but it was not this deadly virus. And in the beginning, I, I, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. I totally agreed. And then all of a sudden, so this was all happening in January, February, all of a sudden in March, the Dems start jumping on this and shutting down their own states like Governor Sislek. And then I knew because during the whole time he allowed construction— so I knew he knew it wasn't a deadly virus because if it was a deadly virus, there was no reason to continue building things if we all were going to die. And also, why would you risk our lives by allowing those guys to continue building things if there really was a deadly virus? So I knew he knew. So then I knew it was political. And that's when I started telling all you from day one, this was political. And everyone said, oh, no, let me put my mask on. It's a deadly virus. Blah, blah. Really, if it's so deadly, why are we like 
everyone's kind of starting to go back to work besides the casinos, you know, but, uh, and no one is talking about that there was like this deadly virus, really. I mean, it's like kind of, but not really. I mean, it's kind of like, okay, kind of keep your six feet. Okay, kind of put on your mask and gloves. I mean, it's pretty lackadaisical if, there, if we really just outlived uh, this crazy deadly virus. So if y'all are still believing it's a deadly virus, you need oh, to wake up. By the way, this way at these numbers, the 100,000. Um, if you want to talk about the actual numbers of COVID exclusively, yeah. they said 100,000 died. Mm. But those are people who had COVID mm. who also... Yeah, so if you go to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, the they, have, uh, two, they, have, they have it all broken down in the ones that actually already had pneumonia. Which, so here's what they're doing. So people that, the ones that died were primarily the people that were already going to die this year from something else. Like they were either going to die from the flu, or they, which is what they died from, or they were going to die from a common cold, or they were going to die from pneumonia. Um, and those were the people that were already very ill. And anything that comes through, any kind of sickness, if they're in the hospital, if they're that ill, they're going to die. And so they already uh, were, they were just using all those people and they're saying, oh, they, they died from the COVID. Yeah, maybe, but, like, they were going to die already. And so if you go to the CDC, it'll show the ones that are already had pneumonia, which they were already going to die because they were already super sick and got pneumonia. And then on top of that, they got the virus. Which you're like, you can kind of count it that way, but, man, they never normally do. Like, they are, like, doing it to scare you guys to make more numbers. And so then you go, Okay, yeah, maybe technically that was the final fucking straw, but they were already dying. You know what I mean? They weren't going to recover from pneumonia. Then they get the COVID virus. It's like, so a lot of those numbers, and then they also found that they were even just fudging the numbers completely, where it'd be like, if someone had the virus, recovered, and then got in a car accident, they were counting that as a COVID virus death. Just because like, oh, they had the virus, and then they died. Yeah, but they didn't die from the virus. So you really got to watch. So the CDC started breaking out those numbers. So First go look. All, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, that's just because you support Trump. I don't support now, Trump. Now, the other thing, well, that's because you support Biden then. I don't support right. Biden. Right, so because that's, the, that's how we also know that this is a hoax. Because if this was really deadly, everyone would be concerned. Right, and the thing is, we wouldn't be talking about politics if it was deadly. We wouldn't be saying... Oh, because you think it's a hoax, then that means you're a Trump supporter. If you think it's the deadly virus, then that means you're a Biden supporter or whoever else is running. I don't even know. Um, no, for one thing, I don't vote, you guys. I do not vote. I refuse to vote unless they change the system or give us some better candidates. I'm not going to vote for any of these buffoons. So I am not a Trump supporter. I think Trump has fucked up so much shit while he's been president. Um but in this particular situation, the Democrats fucked up more shit than Trump. That's all I'm saying. I don't mean I'm voting for either of those turds. I'm not voting. I don't vote. I, I will not vote. I, ever since I was a child and heard how our system worked, even just the electoral, col <laughs> the electoral college of, like, you can, he, someone could win a popular vote and still not win. I'm like, well, that's nonsense. Anyways, right there alone. And then I lived through many Ooh. of the terms of people, uh, uh, get um arguing over you know um fake campaign shit of who is it um nader remember that stuff the nader stuff and then um during the um the uh, the bush and gore stuff and i, I just uh, several things were going on when i was a kid where you're like man these elections seem very rigged and um then i went into the air force during bush's time uh, george w bush but I still didn't vote, and I wouldn't have voted for him. <laughs> My mom liked Bush. <laughs> I thought he was a buffoon. But anyways, um, so I'm not political, but I had to become political this last yeah, 66 think, days. People think that, that they're so glad that they're not American because where they're at in Britain, they're so much smarter than you. They say you're not intelligent, and they're mm -hmm. glad that you are you are here. Well, I'm glad I'm here. So you guys can stay. And maybe you explain to them what being American is all about. Well, America is about freedom, and they so, don't understand that. Oh yeah, so that's fine. You can stay in, in Britain, and you can think you're smarter than um, Americans, but, but that's just your in opinion. But what happened in 1814? 1814, we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. He's actually Scottish. He's from Scotland. Oh, I'm, that's my family. And, and, and I'm Scottish, about, too. The thing about Europe is, 
is that Europe has this tendency to, to create what's called Nazism, mm -hmm. to create superiority. Like, mm -hmm. Scottish people think they're superior to Irish people. Mm -hmm. Irish people think they're superior I'm to Scottish and Irish. German people. German people think they're uh, superior mm -hmm. to Japanese and so forth. That's being in America. You see what we are? We're all a blend. Yep. See, so I'm Scottish, are... Irish, and Native American. So I'm a mutt, and I like it that way. Um, yeah, there's okay. just no superiority of a race. That's ridiculous. Um, that's Nazism, if you believe that. Also, you know, people believe there's superiority of religions. You know, they think if they're in a certain religion, then they're superior to another religion. That's nonsense. People are people. Um, and you can't say, I'm smarter than you or vice versa, especially of a whole culture or a race or religion. Because, for one thing, that's just stereotyping. <laughs> like, because you're just assuming you're smarter because of your experience with someone of that culture but that's only your experiences so that's where you have racism occurs because someone has an experience with someone from a certain culture and they go oh i don't like that person so i don't like anyone from that culture and that's how you create racism so if you already assume you're smarter than another culture or another country or another color or another whatever religion um then you're being racist because how do you know? How do you know who's smarter? And for one thing, everyone is equally just as smart. We just need to tap into our knowledge, and a lot of people don't. But no one is smarter or has ability to be smarter. That's not the case. It's just a lot of people don't tap into their own knowledge. You know, they say we only use like 10% of our brain. But I believe with weed, you use a lot more than that. That's if you're not smoking weed. I believe with weed, we tap into way more. Because ever since I started smoking weed... I've become way smarter in the sense of just I just understand things a lot better than I used to. I have a better grasp on reality of the universe. Right. So, so yeah. So, so, so if you so call yourself smarter, then you're just racist. So what's happening is, is that people are basically attacking each other mm -hmm. based upon facts. See, it's turned into like, oh, you're an American. Oh, you're a Republican. Oh, you're a Democrat. So how could this be about... Yeah, if, if, if it was a deadly virus, we wouldn't even be talking anything else. We wouldn't be arguing politics, or we wouldn't be arguing which country was smarter. If it was really a deadly virus that was going around the world, we would be unifying, and we would be like, let's come together and make sure we don't all die. But that's not what's happening. So it's clearly all political, and it's just the time for everyone to attack each other, each country and each um, political party and each race. Um, we have so much racism that occurs everywhere, in the U.S., worldwide, everywhere, and we act like it, it doesn't. I mean, and it's crazy how racist people are to each other of every color. Like, we have people that are sitting there and they, they think that they're not racist— but then they only hang out with people of the same, whatever it may be. It could be a color. It could be a religion. So it could be um, a certain country. If you're like, I only, you know, I don't like Americans. Um, you could say you don't like certain cultures. So a lot of times people won't even realize. They'll just be like, oh, I don't like. Like they think they can say things like, I don't like people in China. That's extremely racist. How can you not like a whole country? That's racist. Or they'll say, I don't like um, Muslims. Well, it, you might not like their religion, but you, now you're saying that's a whole group of people. You know what I mean? So, and I don't like any religion, but I, the people are not the issue. The religion is the issue. The people are just brainwashed. But so if you say you hate people that are that those people are just brainwashed by a stupid religion but you the individually those people if you met them are probably very nice and that's what happens people go oh, I, you know i thought i hated all these people and then i met one you know whatever it may be a lot of times people be racist towards black people very common for white people to be racist towards black people and vice versa there's a lot of black people that are very racist towards white people as well. They go, oh, man, you're, you're pretty cool for a white person. I usually hate white people. You're like, oh, 
You know, you can go both ways. But I get there's more racism um, in America towards black people. They have it a lot more fortunate than probably any other race of this, this stuff that still occurs a lot of times with police, especially police brutality towards black individuals. It's out of whack on um, the amount of black people uh, in uh, prison and jails versus white people it clearly shows racism there. Because, oh, they do more crime. Bullshit. And if they do, it's only because of the conditions that we've allowed in certain situations where, you know, um, morning, some of the very poor areas, you know, they don't um, give them funding and stuff or uh, for the schools and things. So it continues just this path of, you know, um, where the uneducation and then um, crime, like, um, you know, a lot of times in, in the uh, bad neighborhoods, you'll have people killing each other because they don't know any better, you know, in the in the ones the really poor areas, you know, they got guns and that's where they die more from each killing of each other because they don't have food and things, you know, so they're fighting for, so in and our society doesn't help a lot of the um, poor areas. We allow for really rich things to exist, people to live way in just so much greed and money. And then we allow people to have such horrible living, and we think that's okay. So, oh, they can get food stamps or welfare or whatever. They don't even want them getting that. They're going to say, oh, look at those lazy bums. Yeah, and then they'll say that. Yeah. So we have a real separation of... Um, you know, there's extreme wealth to extreme poverty. And I grew up poor. Um, you know, my mom was a single mom. She worked three jobs, and several of them were janitorial jobs most of the time. Uh, she, um, we did, we cleaned my school. That's what I did. I went to a private school, which was a little tiny one. It was like 100 kids. It was like at a church. And, but the tuition was like $150 a month. My mom couldn't afford that, so we had to clean the school. Um, every day we clean the bathrooms and then once a week we clean the whole school. So I did that my whole life. Um, it was like kindergarten through up through high school. We just cleaned the school. And then my mom worked at several other janitorial jobs. And then she also, you know, would help out at the school. But so we never had a lot of money and we always lived in like the low income apartments, the ones where they would, you would only pay according to how much you make made. And sometimes my mom would only be paying like $90 a month because that's how little she made and they were super crappy apartments, you know. Um, but, like, I in the area we lived was the, so much wealth. We were just in the, put us in the corner. Um, but it's, I've always just seen that separation, and I, I never felt okay being that way. So even when I had money, I was always giving money to people. Like, Jairus would be like, stop giving all of our money away. <laughs> I mean, I would be like, because I don't think, it's fair to live um, in this excess while other people are starving. And right now, there are so many people starving now because of what happened, like especially in Las Vegas. There's so many people out of work, and they're going to be homeless. We're behind on rent. They're working with the people here, luckily. Um, but some people, you know, their landlords are not as nice. Um, but we're way behind. We're about a month behind, so we got to get caught up on that. And because uh, we've been, you guys, I, oh, we don't, I uh, walk in bus and the buses have been free, luckily, during the shutdown because we are trying to like save every dime. Yesterday, Jarvis came with me. It's fun um, because we've been stretching every penny during this shutdown. It is n not good times here in Vegas. And Governor Sislik has no plan to open the casinos and he's messing with people's lives. And that's not fair. And I think they should impeach him. So I was talking about that earlier. So, like, three out of four of the um, governors that have ever been impeached were uh, Democratic. And like I said, I'm not political, but I just found this to be interesting that it ended up being Democrats because I, I wouldn't have known. I just was like, I went and looked it up. And, I thought, oh, interesting, a trend here because I think the next one should be Governor Sislak because I think – and the reason why they were um, uh, impeached was either corruption, abuse of power um, – I forget – the other one, oh, one of them was um, like voter fraud or something like that. But um, so most of them were just like corruption and abuse of power. And I think 100% Governor Sislek has done that because he knew 
this was going to happen. Here's the thing, you guys. This goes so much deeper than you realize where he, there's so much fraud that is um, happened here in Nevada. I mean, Nevada and Sin City, especially Las Vegas, is just this corruption central. I mean, they do so many shady things here. And we've been, you know, here for, what, five, five or six years, and we've seen so much stuff. What is it now? No, more than that. Six. We were here 2013. Three. Yeah, 2013 we got here, actually, so almost seven years now. Um, and here's one of the things that I know for certain people will say I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, this is the fact, and you can say they don't uh, draw lines together to make the little picture I'm saying, but these these little spots line up to where other people consider them to be crimes, just the facts, um, like the SEC. So we'll see. So here's some of the facts that of what happened. So Governor Sisolak, um, of course, is Democratic. So he, of course, would want a Democratic president. We can all agree on that, right? Right. Okay. If you say he don't, then you're just nuts. Of course, any Democrat wants a Democratic president. So right there, we'll say, okay, he wants a Democratic president this next term. Beyond anything else. Okay, that would be, we're all agree on that. So everyone is scared it's going to be Trump again. No one wants that. We can agree on that, right? If you're a Democrat. You don't want Trump, right? Can we agree on that? Okay. So, in January, when we first started hearing about this virus that was uh, occurring in China, they just started to, like, the grumblings about it. Well, all of a sudden, okay, I don't know if you guys know, the Raiders Stadium has had a lot of drama here where they were, like, behind schedule. They had to get... um funding because they were over budget they had to ha go on third shift and pay overtime to get things done they messed up the roof now they're saying that the roof is the way it was originally planned but the roof looks completely different than the original plans which they messed up the roof trusses which we told everyone about back in june 2019 i think it was um uh about that they put together some pieces incorrectly oh all, all kinds of drama anyways not to get into the raiders too deep the point is, in January, they were a little bit worried about if they were going to finish the stadium on time. And they were also worried because they had lawsuits pending from um, Oakland. Oakland was really upset about this. And they didn't know if they were going to have to stay another year in Oakland because um, the stadium might not be done on time. And all kinds of stuff were happening in January. And so the NFL was not supposed to announce that they were going to be the Las Vegas Raiders until March. Like, officially Legally, they said we cannot announce until March 2020 that they will be the Las Vegas Raiders. That was like their official NFL thing. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, we get this announcement on January like 22nd. Uh, no, we get that. We hear about it like the 21st online. Hey, they're going to announce this Las Vegas Raiders tomorrow. We're like, what? The NFL said they can't do that legally until March. All of a sudden, everyone comes over here. They fly in a couple players. They bring in a, a Derek Carr and some Raiderettes. And they bring in Governor Sislex, fat ass. And uh, they bring in um, uh, some of the old players. And um, all, everyone runs over here on the 22nd. And they do this big sh shenanigans. And they announce it's the Las Vegas Raiders. And you say, oh, who cares? What, what's the big significance of that? Well, they knew that they were going to start shutting down stuff for this virus. So they wanted to make sure that the Raiders didn't back out because the Raiders were Sisolak's big thing. He, that's his little baby. And they were questioning if they were going to come to Vegas. So they jumped the system. They announced the Raiders. Um, and then, like two months later, they shut down all of Vegas, allow the Raiders Stadium to still continue, though, during the whole thing. Okay? Now, okay, that's one thing. Now it gets even more complicated than that. Okay? Here's another little thing that Governor Sislek did. So... At the beginning of the year... Hold on. Somebody has, a, someone, someone has a question about the official NFL thing. Mm -hmm. 
Well, no, they weren't. They weren't allowed to until March. Officially, by the they all of the reporters here were saying that they were arguing up until the January twenty first. They were like, "Oh no, no, we can not announce them Las Vegas because it was a big deal, you guys. We didn't know if they were going to come to Vegas until they announced them Las Vegas Raiders. They were still unaware if they were even going to become the Las Vegas Raiders. They were getting sued by Oakland. They were going to possibly stay in Oakland. It was that serious. It was down. It came down to that. So they forced it right away ahead of schedule. Because they didn't want the Raiders to back out of coming to Vegas. Do you see where they forced the Raiders now to be part of Vegas? Even though we are going to have, like, the worst economy ever. Now the Raiders are going to be here with no fans. So they forced them to be a, a be Las Vegas Raiders because they knew they were going to shut down everything. And you say, oh, that seems crazy. But guess what else happened during this whole time? So in the beginning of the year, I think it was maybe even towards the end of the year, um, they started selling off MGM properties. I don't know if you guys know this. Blackstone bought a bunch of properties uh, like Circus Circus, Bellagio, I think even MGM Grand, several other ones. And guess what? Oh, Mandalay and Luxor. And guess what their plan was? A five-year buyback. So in five years, MGM wanted to buy back their properties. But they wanted to sell them for five years for now, which I thought was interesting. And then because we were the economy was just starting to get a little better here. They wanted to sell them and they want to buy them back in five years. So... Now, all, okay, so you say, okay, just keep these things in, in your head while I continue this story. Jim Murin, who was the CEO of MGM, which MGM is not just MGM. That's M Life. That's about 12 properties on the strip. So most of them are either Caesars or M Life. And then the other oddballs, you know, you have Venetian, Wynn, Cosmo, uh, Treasure Island, Tropicana, a couple of other ones. But the rest either are Caesars or or M Life. So Jim Murin was the CEO of about 11 or 12 properties. And they also just became partners with the Raiders. All interesting little things. Well, he sells, he, he, he gets rid of some of his properties to Blackstone and he wants to buy back later. And Jim Murin resigns and cashes out all of his M Life stocks. When it was at the peak. Then, guess who Jim Mirren goes to work for? Steve Sisolik. And guess what they do? They tank the economy and Jim Mirren back, bought back all of his stocks at pennies on the dollar. So he now owns all the stocks way cheaper and he made a fortune. That is highly illegal if you can prove that they knew they were going to do this. And I think there are enough facts to prove that by, for one thing, allowing the stadium to continue if they really believed it was a deadly virus. Very, very so if you can prove that Jim Murin and Governor Sislek conspired to take down Vegas, to make a fortune in the stocks, and to take down Trump, then those two need to go to prison. And Governor Sislek needs to be impeached. And from the facts that lined up of them knowing it wasn't a deadly virus and them still not opening the casinos. While Jim Murin is just, he, he's doing fine. Because remember, he bought all of his stocks on pennies on the dollar. He can sit on them for a long time until they start to make money again because he already made a fortune. And I'm sure Governor Sislek was part of that deal. Since why did he hire the CEO of MGM? It's kind of a weird thing to go from the CEO of MGM to then being, uh, like, partners with the governor. Usually the casinos aren't super fond of the state. Especially right now. Because the state is not allowing them to open. They're usually not really fond of each other. So if any of this can be proven, then those two will go to prison. Because what they did is highly illegal when it comes to stocks. You can't do that. That's called insider trading. You can't do that. Well, where he's at in Texas, everything's open. Everything's open in Texas. He's in Texas? Someone, someone said, well, I'm in Texas. Everything's now open. So what's the problem? Well, we're seeing in uh, Nevada, it's still not. They won't allow the casinos to open. They have no date. Governor Sislek will not give them a date that they can even open. 
He just continues to ignore them when they ask them. I talked to a guy who is um, very important at Stations Casino. Um, he was a client of mine, and he is someone that actually was writing letters and contacting and emailing and doing you know anything they can to get Governor Sussex's attention. He ignores them, and all they ask for is a time to start. The, like, can we have a date? And he will not even give them a date. So they can't make reservations. They can't make plans. They're all planning for June 1st, and he hasn't even given them a date. And he's, it's not going to be June 1st. So I don't know if they're just going to open and rebel. They should. Well, they're all planning for June 1st. One of them said June 4th now. Yeah, see, they're already changing it because, because he will not give them a date, you guys. So I don't know why. Yeah, Texas is open. Some states are open. Why is Nevada not open? Okay, Oh, I didn't know well, I, I, it's telling me half the screen is sponsored by. Oh. You're on a pretty good roll there. I love Gerald Sanders. They followed me on Twitter. And what happened? Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm mad because Whole Foods cut me off from buying Gerald Sanders online. Because we don't have a car, so I do the... Oh, this is live. We don't have a car, so I do online orders, you know, and they deliver it. And they cut me off. I can't order Gerald Sanders. They said that I'm maxed out. So Whole Foods is going to sit there on so many Gerald Sanders because I buy their Gerald Sanders like no one else does. I've been buying them for several years now. Like, I buy their Gerald Sanders. They have been ordering them for me. Like, I buy every day, every day. I buy Gerald Sanders if we can. And um, so the online thing cut me off. It says I can't order anymore. If I put it in my cart, when I go to check out, it takes it off my cart, all of them, and it says you reach the max quantity. So it lets me buy zero. So I'm going on strike on Whole Foods. Um, I'm ordering from Amazon Fresh now um, until further notice. And I might eventually call them, but for right now, I'm just mad because I'm like, fuck you guys, cutting me off. So they're going to sit there, and they're going to end up with so much inventory of Gerald Steiners because people aren't going to buy them. Because I was seriously the one that buy them. I mean, they're, they're not that popular. Um, that many people like them, but the, I was buying so many that the store was used to, you know. They were ordering because they knew they had, like, they didn't necessarily know it was me, but they knew, like, oh, when we when we buy these, they get bought. But that's not going to happen. So I'm mad. So I'm going on strike. I might call them because this is kind of bullshit. I don't know why the system cut me off. Well, it, I, I kind of know why because I bought too many. But um, <laughs> but forever now? But the, what happened was I was trying to get garlic one day. So I did two orders. So then, you know, they only let you buy five a day. But I was trying to get an order. I needed garlic. And they didn't send me the garlic in the first order. So then I tried to get garlic again. And, well, you have to get a $35 order. So I added some more jail steiners and added a couple more things. Well, then they said that I was cheating the system because, you know, they had like this. This where you can only buy so much water and shit right now, you know, because this stupid virus stuff. So they cut me off. But now I'm cut off, like, permanently. Like, I can't for the last four days. I haven't been able to order water at all from them. So I said, fine. Fuck them. Okay, a couple comments. Um, Mario says, here in Connecticut, they just started phase one. But masks are required everywhere. And that it's still is still a nonsense. ghost state. <laughs> See, what's funny here, actually, in Nevada, well, not in Nevada fully, in Las Vegas is all I know of. I don't know what's going on in the rest of Nevada. But in Las Vegas, um, uh, masks are not required. They're um, recommended, which I say. <laughs> I put on one mask during this to get my weed one day. They they made me put it on because I had to go in the store. Oh, tell them about my, my experience. You know who really likes the masks? Were some of the drug dealers I met. At the bus stop, they said the masks oh, are yeah. great because they get banned. Yeah, they, they love it. Like, the people that have been banned from places are loving it because no one knows who they are when they cover their face when they come in now. So it's like, it's just nonsense. But, um, yeah, I had to do it one time at the weed place because they messed up my order, so I actually had to go into the store. So they made me put on a mask. So we did, like, a little video on it because I was so mad. Well, I wasn't really mad. I, um, 
that I had to do that one time, but I would be mad if it was mandatory. Um, but I, I just thought it was more funny that day. But if I had to wear one, I would be mad because this is nonsense. Um, luckily, they did not do that here. Um, they just say, oh, recommended. And I say, okay. One day they even said mandatory at the Walmart, and I didn't have a mask. Like, they put a sign for one day, and then they changed it because it wasn't. Um, luckily, it's just, like, never said that. <laughs> I'm sure because his fat ass don't want to put it on when he's golfing. Did you guys know that he allowed golf? Oh, did you guys? I forgot about this. See, I haven't been on here for a while. Did you guys know that he only stopped the golf courses for one week? They've been allowed to be open the entire time. So even like the restaurants at the golf courses. So Governor Sislek and all of his friends have been able to completely still go to their clubhouses and do whatever they want. Even probably the gyms there. Their clubhouses have been open. So they can drink. They can go golfing. They only close them for one week. But they close the casinos for already 66 days and have no date of opening. So Governor Sislek allowed everything that him and his croonies wanted at, like, the Raiders Stadium and golf courses were allowed to be open. One week is all he closed them for. And they were shocked. I, I, I talked to a guy who works ago. Yeah, we got closed for one week. Couldn't believe it. I'm What's like, up, Jedi Joy from Big Daddy? Hey, Big Daddy. Um, anyways, so you're telling me he thought it was a deadly virus? So if they can prove that him and Jim Murin conspired, those two would go to prison. And I hope that happens. I think at least he should be impeached because this is a total abuse of power. There's no reason for him to not open the casinos now. All the casinos want to open. I don't even know why they just don't. They should because I think the police here would um, be on the side of the, uh, the casinos. I think they could work with them and say, fuck this fat ass up in Carson City. Let's just do our thing here and fuck him. If everyone opened, what are they going to do? Come in and try and raid the casinos. The casinos will have more security, and I think they should get Metro to support the casinos. Metro should. They're destroying our town. Like, he's sitting up there and making a fortune, probably because him, him and Jim Marin just cashed in all their stocks. They don't care that Vegas is in the toilet because they're going to buy it back in five years, remember? Jim Marin's going to be probably part of that. He'll probably go back to work for MGM when they buy back their properties. So... They don't care if Vegas is in the toilet right now. It's better for them because they know it'll only go up from here. You know what I mean? It's like they're going to sit on like, – because they already made their fortune and then they're sitting on really cheap stocks and then once those stocks – they can just sit on them and then eventually they know they'll go back up because it's Vegas and it'll eventually pick back up, you know. But, you guys, this is nuts here. And if you still believe that Governor Sislek believes this is a deadly virus, you are out of your mind because he allowed construction the entire time. All construction. Even the, like, the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, uh, the resort world, which, why would we build a new casino when the current ones are closing? Did you know Palms is closed? Done. Indefinitely. They've already gutted it. I've seen photos. It's done. Done. Like, and, and done for years. I mean, someone probably, it, it maybe eventually could buy it, but it wouldn't be probably, like, I would guess, like, 10 years from now. I mean, because there's going to be so many um, empty projects here for a minute. Like, Palms probably won't be the first on people's list. And Excalibur is not on the list to come back. Um, uh, I don't remember which other ones they were talking about. But a lot of them don't even have plans to opening until t late 2021. Like Aria, they don't even plan on opening Aria until September 2021 um, at the earliest. But it'll probably be even later than that because depending on how late these ones. They were planning on opening these ones in May already. Some of them wanted to open May 22nd. Um, then a lot of them are wanting to open June 1st. But Governor just like refuses to give the casinos a date. He does not care that he is destroying Sin City. Because him and his little buddy already made their money. And now they're hoping that people will not vote for Trump because the, the economy sucks. But what you should not vote for is a Democrat at this point. Like I said, I don't vote, but I definitely wouldn't vote for a Democrat because what they did is absolutely horrific. They There's so many unemployed people here in Nevada, and they're not going to get jobs because the casinos are not going to exist. Like, there were X amount of casinos, okay? Let's say, I don't even know how many there were. Let's say... Let's say there were 40 casinos here. There are probably more than that. But I'm just going to say 40 of, like, the big ones. Now, when they come back, 
there's only going to be, especially in the beginning, a handful, like let's say five. So that think of each casino had thousands of jobs. So if there was like 40, for example, and there was even more than that, everyone that closes, thousands of people are out of work and there's nowhere for them to go because there isn't another casino that has housed thousands of jobs because there's only now five out of 40. But there's even more than that because there's a lot of little the oddball casinos. You know, you got um, the Fiestas are not coming back from Stations Casinos. Um, they are talking about, I think Texas Station maybe was one of them. They're not coming back. One of the station casinos the Palms is not coming back. That was a stations casino. Um, so, I mean, they're not bringing them back. They can't afford to bring them back. They lost that much money that they lost their casinos until someone buys them. And there's, uh, like, Wynn uh, is probably not bringing back Encore, not for a long time. Venetian's not bringing back Palazzo, not for a long time. Um... I mean, Vegas is going to be uh, terrible when it first opens, too, because it's going to be, like, one casino open, three closed, one open. It's going to be not what people are used to. And this was for no reason, for a regular flu virus. The governor, just like knew it was a regular flu virus, because he allowed construction, and he allowed golf courses. <laughs> And he allowed just the silliest little things. Even now, they're opening all kinds of things. Nail salons are open now. Oh, because that's so essential to get your nails done. I mean, when I see these things opening, I'm like, oh, that's so important. But we can't open the casinos, but we can make sure all the nail salons are open. So I can make sure I get my pedicure and manicures during a global pandemic. Yeah. You tell me he believes it's still a deadly virus. No, they're opening all kinds of things here, just not the casinos. So you tell me it's for any other reason than the reasons I said. And convince me that he believes it's a deadly virus when he's letting nail salons and golf courses and construction go on. But he says the casinos won't even give him a date. Won't even give him a date. Do you know how hard it is for them to plan? They're trying to already, they already started staffing because they thought they could open June 1st. But I don't think that's going to happen. But so they have to like plan ahead of the date, but they have no dates. So it's just this nightmare where they don't know when, they can't make reservations, they can't plan for their staff. He is just fucking with the casinos. You guys, there's no other reason. You cannot tell me any other thing than he is just trying to sabotage Las Vegas. You say, why would he? And I, you know, and you think... I don't know why the state governor would want to sabotage the main source of income, but he's that stupid, and him and Lil Jim Mirren are that rich right now that they don't care. Because you know what else he's sabotaging is weed, which we got so much weed business from tourists, so now the weed business is going down the toilet. We already got some dispensaries that are closing, especially the ones that cater to tourism. And guess what? That was going as Governor Sislek. It was also going to him directly. He was not even giving the money to the education, we found out. He was just buying himself private jets from the weed money, which was supposed to improve education here since they have one of the worst public school systems in the country, in Nevada here. I didn't go to school here. I went to school in California, thank goodness, because the schooling system is terrible in Nevada. I'm glad I don't have kids here because they say it's the worst. Um, and they were going to get all kinds of funding because they were getting so much money from the weed and Governor Sislek did not give it to the teachers. They actually have already been on strike about it and everything and did not give it to the schools. And he was buying himself private jets. So the guy is, there's already been all kinds of drama with the guy. They call him a showboater that he just likes to just, just lavish spend and show off to his friends. And clearly that's what he's doing. Like, here you guys, so look, I'll do whatever. Yeah, I'll make it. I'll make us make all this money. We'll, we'll, you know, sell the stocks when they're really high, and then we'll tank them and buy them back times on the dollar, and then we'll keep the golf courses open. So we'll have a great time during the 66 days while everyone else is miserable, and way more than 66 days because we're not even close to an end. And you tell me he believed it was a deadly virus. Well, I don't think golf courses are necessary if it's a deadly virus. And he only closed them for one week. And he allowed all of the golf courses to be open. The bars, everything, the restaurants, everything. It, the clubhouse is open. That's almost the same as a casino. Have you been to those clubhouses? They have buffets. They got uh, bars. They got gyms. All that was allowed to be open. 
So you're telling me that he really believed it was deadly virus and that he still believes it's a deadly virus. Then we need to phase in and we need to do these degrees of separation in order to... No, 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 this is bullshit, you guys. This is a scam. These are lies. And it just sucks because so many people are going to lose their jobs over it. And it makes me really sad. And if it doesn't make you sad, then you're not paying attention. Because I have cried a lot during this. And I get straight up depressed. I haven't been on here for a while because I was depressed. This is not... This is not cool that we have politicians that are playing with our livelihoods and people are thinking that it's okay. Like they are uh, praising them when they are destroying our lives. And we're saying, oh, thank you, governors, this like for keeping us safe. My fucking ass he's keeping us safe. For one thing, he would have contaminated us all if... If there really was because he allowed construction, he allowed golf courses, he allowed all kinds, like, he allowed us at first to just bombard each other in the grocery stores. We were packed in like sardines until they realized maybe we should make tape and separate a little bit. First it was like, you were like, okay, close the casinos, but then pack into the goddamn grocery stores like you wouldn't believe in the beginning. The first month, they didn't have any kind of rules of separation. So you were, like, literally crammed at the grocery store. I said, oh, this is great if there really was a deadly virus. And this was before anyone was even wearing masks or anything. So it was, this has just been nonsense the entire time. And so many people are suffering. The RTC, which is the bus here, has been suffering because they've had to give free um, bus rides, which has been fantastic for the Jedi because we don't have money. But it's unfortunate for them, and they're starting to not have enough money now because they still have people working, but they are not making any money. Um, just because they, uh, uh, Governor Sussex did this thing where you couldn't have, because you to pay them needs to be in the front, but then that would be contaminating the driver because they made these weird rules. So we have to enter through the back of the bus so you can't pay for your ride. And now um, they're having an issue because the bus is just filled with homeless people. Because it used to be, you know, if it costs a couple dollars, you keep some of the riffraff off of the bus. But now anyone can just sit on there all day. You go on there and people are just sleeping on there and stuff because the more and more people are homeless too. And there's no, uh, no one is regulating the bus because even the bus driver can't do it. He's not allowed to talk to you. He just sits in the front and they put caution tape. So, like, you can have all these issues with homeless people in the back and they can't even deal with it. Really, I mean, it's like, it's so, uh, normally they would not allow that, you know, because they go back and they would, you know, they have a little bit of rules, but now it's free for all. And it's just a mess. All kinds of things. Already crime's going to start because people aren't going to have money. It's going to happen. People are going to start um, having to steal. That's what happens when people lose their jobs and lose their life. Is that's when people start stealing. People think, oh, you know, only criminals steal. No, people steal when they don't have what they need. That's when people start stealing. And that's what's going to happen. Um, the more people out of work, you're going to see more crime. And that's what happens. The more unemployment, the more crime. They go hand in hand. So Governor like is making it very unsafe here in Las Vegas for people because we're going to have so many people haven't realized yet. So we're kind of in this little bubble. But once more and more people realize they're not getting their casino jobs back and once their um, unemployment runs out because they've been getting their unemployment benefits, then they're going to have zero dollars and they're either going to, you know, be kicked to the street with kids, too. They're going to have kids. So they're going to be resorting to crime. I mean, you're going to have families resorting to crime for no reason, you guys. So Jim Murin and Governor Sisolak could get richer and try to get Trump out of office. They're playing with all of our lives. Bottom line. If you don't believe that, you need to wake up. Because you can't tell me that there was any other... Um, explanation for especially the things that were allowed to stay open during this time, like construction and golf courses. So right there, it'll already, in your own brain, you don't have to listen to anyone. You can, you can in your own brain say, okay, if a politician really thought this was a deadly virus, would they allow new projects to be built like, why would that be important? If we all are going to die, why would we need new stadiums, new casinos, new buildings, new apartments, new hotels, new houses when the current ones are going to be vacant and going out of business? 
Do you see what I mean? So right there, you should just say, okay, he knew. And all of the Democratic governors knew because it's the same. A lot of the states, the same story. But I don't know it all the details because I've only been tracking Nevada, to be honest, because I, I don't know what's going on in all your guys' states. But I know um, they have some stricter regulations in some states. They have some lighter in other states. Some are back to normal. Um, but in Nevada here, this is just the casinos. No date. No date to open. All right, guys. I'm going to get off here. Um, I'm going to make breakfast and take a bath. I haven't taken a bath yet. I woke up. Yeah, yeah, I hear Joe Rich. But I woke up and I was like, I finally need to do a blog. What happens when I normally wake up and then I'm like, oh, I need to take a bath. And then I need to take a bath. And then I'm like, oh, I need to make breakfast. And then the blog just never happens. So I was like, all right, let me just get up and do the blog. And that's why we haven't done it. But I also, oh, I was depressed because I was saying, this is just not cool, you guys. I and mean, this makes me very sad. And I cry when I go by the casinos. I have to go by South Point all the time because we live near here. And it makes me sad every time. Like, it's it's sad to see the casinos. They're just empty. And it's just, it's weird. They Casinos never used to close, you guys. Like, they were never closed. They didn't, they were 24 hours. So, this is insane. Okay, All right, I'll catch y'all later. Not the death. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business. I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin'. This is not for you. I'm a jail, my beats with the Kanye yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. Like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down or lay down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out.